the view from my third floor window overlooks all of Easton and beyond to New Jersey. Can't actually see New Jersey in this painting, but it's um, my neighborhood. That's Lisa's house, and the one to the left is Phyllis's house. Welcome to um, infamous Oculus, and these are my paintings. I'm Jackie Lima. This work happens to be horizontal, but uh, many of my other works are vertical strips, the same, 1 by 12. So if it's 6 inches, it's 72 long. While working on this in my front yard, wrapping it all the way around, um, it obviously includes my own house, my neighbor's houses, down the street, up the street, and I started to think about American neighborhoods and their diversity and wanting to celebrate that. So um, consequently, I included as many neighbors as I could see and was trying to think of a way for uh, their stories to come into play, who they are and how we all got here. Um, so that led into the painting. And the painting, both of these are called Here Comes the Neighborhood. And so it's a celebration of the neighborhood and and who lives in America. So... I started asking them their stories and putting their stories on the back of the painting. The painting is also 1 by 12. Um, the aluminum is 12 inches, so it's 12 inches uh, by 12 feet. But it's not flat. It's horizontal, but it's not flat. So um, it's been bent into a configuration of interest to me and um, and I'm drawing on the back on the aluminum um, the stories of my neighbors and their migration to America. That includes the uh, Moravian Church which I knew very little about um, except that uh, they are a neighborhood, neighborly group of people who believes that God is inside everyone. So if you rebuke your neighbor, you rebuke God. That's all I knew about them. But I looked it up and I found a whole lot more information, such as uh, in their early, early stages, there was a fellow named Ian Hus who was burned at the stake because, uh, by the Catholic Church because uh, he insisted that Jesus was the, was the uh, true leader of the church. So that same summer, I read um, The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. It's about time, I guess. And um, he wrote this beautiful piece about democracy and its importance uh, in the introduction to a reprinting of the book in 1981 before he died. And it was so eloquent I wanted to include it because I'm trying to make uh, that point about democracy. Twelve-fold path, well, it's like a visual experiment. 
standing on the stairs, turning in space. Each strip is 1 by 12 with those configuration I talked about before. Masid Banda is a little town on the edge of Hyderabad, India. It's right near to Central University, so there's many uh, students there, college students. And I lived there for probably six months and did this painting right in the center of town. So the guy you see there behind him are the bananas. He come down every day to the center and sell bananas. And the women to the left of him are day workers. They're waiting for the truck to come, pick them up, take them off. Um, and they would all meet in the center of town. And boy, do those women work, I want to tell you. Woodstock, New York. It's a town I've known since I was 10 years old. I used to go up there to buy art supplies because there was an art supply store there. And the main street is called Tinker Street. Happens to be my mother's maiden name, Tinker. So it's always uh, been a place of affinity for me. I spent the summer up there and just let the people come to me. Whoever came over, you know, they ended up, I photographed them and put them in the painting. The painting itself was made on the spot. The, the figures were put in to where they actually stood in space afterwards with the photos. I tried to get as much technology in, the video camera, the video in the guy's hand, you know, what was happening at the time. Um, they had a lot of children's uh, things in the shop there. This person was a runner and he used to bring me coffee so I wanted to put him in the painting. And this guy was actually, people throw money over the corner so uh, he's picking up money out of the crick. Ed Sanders is the guy under the Tinker, Tinker Street from the Fugs, remember in the 60s? Going around the center of town. You know, it's sort of a touristy town here. So there's a lot of shops and uh, entertainment, uh, you know, bars and stuff like that. So people, the main characters here, they're kind of looking right at us. The father, David, was a tarot card reader. He made a living. He had six kids, and he made a living reading tarot in downtown uh, Woodstock. The Hulford Lab. I did an artist-in-residency in... Residency in uh, Ms. Halford's, uh, Mandy Halford. She um, is doing research on mollusks, and that's why there are shells on the back of the, or in the verso, I should say, of, of the piece. And that is her, a portrait of her in her office. So I spent, you know, several months there drawing and going through their lab books, and uh, and this is a part of the work that I did there. Again, that is uh, 1 to 12 on a horizontal. And it's the same configuration as the much bigger piece that is from the neighborhood that is 12 inches by uh, 12 feet. The New York Stock Exchange, well, I went down there. Same process, right? I'm there on the spot in Lower Manhattan in front of the uh, the old Treasury building and across from the Stock Exchange. And J.P. Morgan Chase is there. It's like a whole... Used, used to be you could drive your car down Wall Street, but after 9-11, they won't even actually let you walk there anymore. In this, in this, at this particular time, you could walk there. So I eliminated all the tourists in this painting and I just focused on the guns and the suits because I wanted to get the business people 
and the and the um, police officers with machine guns, which I never in my life expected to see on the streets of New York City, but there they were, protecting the suits. Saraswati is the Hindu goddess of knowledge, music, art, speech, wisdom, and learning. She is a girl after my own heart, Sir Goddess, I should say. Um, she plays a veena and has certain accoutrements that go along with her to identify her, uh, and mostly books. I, I had the opportunity of um, attending a puja with uh, a Saraswati puja, and we all put our books there for her to bless. So I feel very close to her, and I did this painting called Saraswati in my, my heart. In the bottom right of the painting, there um, is a spherical painting that also has me and Saraswati in the mirror in the painting. That painting is called Polarization, and it's also in this exhibition you'll see. Polarization was uh, painted on an antique globe of the Earth, so you get islands and map pieces, and of course all the continents are there. And, um, and where the ocean would be is an interior a space of a room done in 360 by 360 by 360. You're looking here at the bottom of it to begin. My cat is sleeping on the rug. Hi, T. Well, I invited some girlfriends over and we met for cheese and other tea and other things. So I started photographing them but basically, they they set for this these paintings. I, my photographs are for like really raw for these for this painting. So they actually did come back and sit for me to uh, make it more alive. This took place in uh, my kitchen. Same cat as was on the floor upstairs in the other painting. Um, pretty much I'm moving around uh, the house that I live in and making paintings of what goes on in those spaces.